Hello, I'm a guitar geek, and today on the bench is a dream guitar. It is a USA standard 93 or 1994 Strat from Fender. Um, it was the guitar that I wanted when I first started playing guitar in that time. Back when I knew nothing about guitars, I knew what a Fender Strat was, and this was the dream guitar. And I got a, uh, a Strat copy from Honer that had to make do. Uh, that was nowhere near the guitar this is though, however. This is not uh, standard, uh, it's been modded already, it's got some Seymour Duncan pickups in it and it's got Callaham saddles and a Callaham steel block. There are a few problems with it, generally speaking it's in fantastic condition. Um, but it's got a bit of fretware up here, it's got a broken nut which needs replacing and nothing's wired in because my friend that sold it to me, Graham, hello Graham who's undoubtedly watching this, uh, didn't wire anything in, he just switched the pit guards over because that's what I wanted. Um, so, time to get to work. First thing to do is to go in with the GoPro and show you how it looks. Here we go. So, these are the Callahan saddles. Uh, strings are in really good condition, even though Graham says they're quite old. Going up here, the uh, the fret here, I think he must have played a lot around this kind of area. Uh, up at this side, they're actually pretty good. Um, and the nut is broken just here. That was going to get replaced anyway with um, a GravTech nut. This is the one that's going on there, the Tusk XL. Over on the back we've got five springs and I'm going to be taking that down to three. Uh, the neck is beautiful and it really reminds me of my Tele neck which is around the same year as this. Very gorgeous neck. Um, and as you can see from the bodywork it is in very very good condition. The first thing to do is to whop these strings off. Here we go, strings are away. Uh, I've got this Planet Waves string winder cutter, which I love. This goes in as a backup, just in case the battery runs out on my power tool Bosch XO. Um, get those strings safely filed away on the floor. Next thing to do is to take the pick guard off. This is the exciting part because we get to see all the insides of the guitars. So this screw was just spinning round and round, so that needs filling and re-drilling. Um, popping it off. That is some kind of swimming pool. And that's really sharp. Ow. Uh, we've got some Seymour Duncan SSL1s in there. Very nice, Graham. Pots are nice, CTS pots. Um, yeah. Wonderful. Not much to be done there. Let's flip her over, and I'm going to pop some of these springs out. The way I like to do that is just get a screwdriver in there, lift it up. There we go, done. This has got the adjustable tilt neck, which uh, allows you to change the angle of the neck to the body. Never really figured out how to use this properly, because it's got it on my telly as well, and I've never played with it, so I've got to learn something today. Next thing is to take the neck off. The question is, how tight is the fit without the screws? There's the neck plate off. Oh, nice and tight. Oh, I can't get it out. Disaster. If you're planning on doing this, a little tip is to get a pen or some kind of round end and use that to press the tape, not your finger, because it will cut you. It is very sharp. I found a date stamp on the end of the neck. It's the 18th of February 1993, which means that this guitar is 25 years old, shy of a few weeks. Uh, and understandably then, it needed a bit of fret work and fret polishing, and there was uh, a bit of a dry rosewood board, but that's now lemon oiled and it's still very oily. But I'm going to leave it on there to let that oil soak into the wood um, and move on. So that's the neck, uh, very pleased with it. It's, it is such a beautiful neck. It still needs a little bit of cleaning back here from the masking tape. I did that off camera because it's not too interesting to watch me do that, but there will be a video on my channel soon, if not already, uh, on teaching you how to do that. It's time to reunite the neck and body. Before I do that, I'm gonna make these holes slightly bigger because I want that screw to go through the body and not grip the body at all, but grip the neck tightly. This will bring the neck and the body tighter together, giving us about a thousand percent more tone and a million times more sustain. Um, at the moment, it grips the body. But, let's drill those holes bigger so it slips right through. 
The screws are about 4.2 millimeters thick and the holes are now 4.5 millimeters. So this should slip straight through the body. Yeah. And there's no grip from the body, it'll just grip into the neck, giving us uh, a bit more pull. Screws are in most of the way, now using a screwdriver to do that last little tighten. And I've just used an old 46 gauge string to put that hole through um, because of the tape. And now I can feed these wires through. To get the jack socket back in, I've taken an old 46 gauge E string, put the wires to the ball, like so. There we go. Now, push the string through. Pull it through. Feed those in a little, give it a little help. And there we go, pulls through nice and easily. The scratch plate is wired extremely well. We've got some cloth wiring here, some CTS pots and a tone capacitor and a good switch. What it doesn't have is a treble bleed mod, which I'm going to install now. Um, this is a 0 0.001 capacitor and a 100K resistor. This is gonna go on the volume pot and help the guitar retain those high frequencies when you roll back the volume. Normally, with your guitar on 10, it's letting everything through, pretty much. As you roll off the volume, the sound will get darker and darker because the high frequencies get rolled off more than the bass frequencies. By installing this treble bleed mod, it helps you retain those frequencies and give you a clearer sound at lower volume. If you can see that there, it's just the capacitor here with the resistor wired on the two legs, and then we wire that into the volume pot, just here. I will go more into detail about this treble bleed mod on another video, maybe it's already on the channel, uh, but for now we're just gonna whack it into the guitar and get things wired up. So here we go. There we are, it's really that simple. Just make sure that uh, nothing's connecting, nothing's grounding, and you're ready to rock and roll. On to the jack socket now. I'm going to fit the nut now, but before I do, let's go in with the GoPro and look at these slots here in the wood. I don't know exactly how that's been done, but um, I don't know if it's the fault of the guitar or if it's just the setup, but hopefully the new nut will help remedy that. Two things left to do before the strings go on. First thing is to make sure that these nuts on the tuners are nice and tight. Hands tight only, any tighter you can damage the wood of the guitar. And the second thing to do is to add these. These are string trees. They are permanently lubricated string trees made from the same, same stuff that this nut is made from. Um, these Fender string trees are okay, they're fine, but these are gonna cause even less friction, which means more stu tuning stability. That's a really easy fit to do. Um, aesthetically, looking at these holes here, you can still see the old holes from the old string trees, but if you're looking at these holes, then you're doing it wrong. Strings are on, so it's time to cut the nut slots. Get the GoPro in there. What I want to do is to cut this nut slot deep enough so that that string, or indeed every string, has just a hair's distance between that first fret and that string when pressing it down at around the third fret. So that's where it is, and roughly there is where we want to be. And we get there not by adjusting anything up here, but by cutting that nut slot a little deeper. These are the 10 to 46 gauge strings I'm using. So first up I'm doing the low E, that's a 46 gauge file. Um, so I'm gonna use that as a saw, Get that slot deeper and then round it off with this little file here. In I go. There. It is cutting in. I've got some little dust just here. Blow that out. Let's try the string back in there. Still too high. Okay.
It's really important to check that slot at intervals. You don't want to be going too deep because then you need a new nut or one of those fancy fixing jobs. This E string is still a fraction too high. What I'm going to do, I'm going to move on to the next ones and just like tightening up screws, do them all almost to the end and then do the final piece right at the end. For the top E string, the gauge 10, I'm using a gauge 10 razor saw. Very sharp, very quick, be careful. It's done, the nut is cut, and so is my finger. So I'm going to move on and do the rest of the action and set up now. This is normally the part where I take the guitar and I play it for you and I say, wow, it sounds so much better and it plays much easier and well done and pat myself on the back and I'm brilliant. However, not today. There's been a major catastrophe. And if you see the guitar now, it's back in two pieces, body and neck. Um, I've got a big problem with the micro tilt adjustment and the screw holes into the neck, which is due to the micro tilt adjustment. What's happened, I think, if I go in with the GoPro, is that the micro tilt has bound into the neck a little bit and is now um, slanted or on the wonk, which means that it is pushing the neck uh, further up on the bass side. I can't quite get the action right on the top strings just here. Uh, panicked, slept on it, and I think I now have a solution. I took this neck, which is a cheapo from AliExpress. It's slightly warped, so it's no good for the project I was going to use it for. Uh, it's become a donor neck for any neck related problems. Screwed some, uh, drilled some holes in it and made myself a little pot of tone dust. Here is the, uh, the tone dust from that neck, which I've drilled and, and made very fine. I will mix it with some, um, some glue, some wood glue, and fill some of these holes ever so slightly, and then re-drill them a little bit so that the screws and this uh, micro tilt can uh, behave themselves. So off we go. This is my tone slurry, a mix of tight bond, uh, the tone dust, and a little bit of tone water. It is ready to fill those holes. It's a little bit, a little bit too wet actually, but uh, it's going to go for it. What I'm going to do is fill this hole ever so slightly. Well. I'm going to put loads in there and then take it out again. If anyone ever plans on doing this, I have two pieces of advice. Firstly, don't ever put the neck on before the glue is dry. And secondly, just, just don't do it. Don't do it. It's a stupid idea and I'm not even sure if it's going to work. She's done. I'm going to leave her overnight in a warm place so the glue can dry fully. Hello, Evelina's here now. And what are you going to clean, are you? In a hello, Papa Pig. Come on then. Hello, Papa Pig. I think Papa Pig subscribes to this channel, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I'm back, the tone dust is in, the tone glue is set, and it looks like this. Um, it's a little bit too much in there, so I have to sand a little bit out, but uh, Let's do that now. I've got, a, I've got a piece of wood here. I'm going to put it on top. Hammer. Okay, it's now sitting almost flush. It's a little bit under the surface. Still a little bit proud, so I'm going to pop it back out and take away some more wood. It's in, uh, it's flush, or just a little bit below the surface, which means the neck will sit in there nicely now and the micro tilt will work as it was designed to. Where I filled these holes on the neck, I just need to sand that down ever such a little bit um, so it makes sure it sits in the neck pocket nicely. That was just a very light sanding around the edges of these holes. I haven't sanded the neck itself, that's always a bad idea. 
And in she goes. The neck is back in position. I'm just gonna screw these screws in just a little bit to mark the back of the neck so I know where those holes are going to be just to check they're still in the same place. Then take it out to the pillar drill and drill those holes, making sure they're straight. Okay, I'm back and here's the moment of truth. It's all gone well so far. Uh, I'll be honest, I was a little bit nervous about doing that because I hadn't done it before and uh, I got this guitar from a friend and I, I don't want to mess it up. Um, the proof is in the eating or, or the tuning and the setup as it were, so I'll set it up and see if what I've done has actually worked. <laughs> It's in my very hands, it's finished, and it's such an awesome guitar. Uh, this neck feels amazing, and the pickups, the SSR1s, just make it so bell-like, to, to use a cliche, sorry. I love playing it. Um, in all honesty, I finished it a few days ago, and I've yet to make this video uh, summary because I've been playing it, so that's probably a good sign. It's set up really well, it still needs a little bit of time to settle, um, there's still a little bit of buzzing on the frets, but that's going to settle over time. I, I hope it might need a little bit more adjusting. Um, I'm going to play some more sound samples for you now. Here's a few Strat tones uh, through the Boss Katana Artist. <laughs> This has been quite a long video. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. If you've made it this far, it means you're pretty hardcore. If you're hardcore, then please leave the comment badger down below. That does two things. It lets me know how many people have made it to the end and are therefore hardcore. It will also confuse the heck out of people who have not made it this far. Don't forget to like, and if you subscribe, click the bell button below. That means you get notified every time I upload a video. I'm the Guitar Geek. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.